a common question that we've been asked is why is the 3D laser box superior? What is it about the FOV in the spec sheet that makes the 3D laser box better than other lasers? So today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig a little deeper and I'm gonna explain to you a little bit more about the field of view and why it is so important to when you're doing production and when you're serious about your business, how that actually makes a significant difference in the quality of what you're gonna be producing. My name is Riaz Datu, by the way. I'm the founder of 3DCrystal.com. And if this is the first time you're coming across my YouTube channel, I welcome you. I love talking about 3D crystals. I love talking about where we were, where we're currently at, and where we're going. And hopefully, some of the tips and tricks that I share will help you in your uh, 3D crystal business as well. So, let's get started. Field of view, what is field of view? Field of view really is the maximum range that a laser beam can reach when it is being shot through the lens at the top of your machine. So a manufacturer might tell you that your machine or the machine that you purchase from them will be able to produce a crystal that is 20 centimeters large. But what they might not tell you is, is that that laser can only reach five centimeters, which is on average what most lasers can achieve. What that means is, is that in this case here, let's assume that we've got a crystal. So they said 20 centimeters, right? So let's assume that this here is 20 centimeters. What's happening is, is that the laser beam is coming through the lens and it is going to its first position. It is then swinging five centimeters across, call that five centimeters, and that's its maximum reach. Now what has to happen is the table needs to move. The table moves over and then the laser continues and now it goes to the next reach, right? The next strike point five centimeters there, table moves. It now does the next five centimeters and then the next five centimeters. And then, and that's essentially how it operates. So what is the problem with this current technology or this current approach? First of all, it is quite innovative. It is quite good. If you look at laser machines from a decade ago, 20 years ago when we started, a machine couldn't produce a crystal larger than six centimeters of which five centimeters was the burn field and then you'd have one centimeter uh, or half a centimeter on each side as the margin, right? So that's what it used to be 20 years ago. So this technology is actually quite innovative to being able to achieve larger sizes of crystal. The problem with it is, is that first of all, it burns layer by layer. So it'll finish this entire layer. That's the top of this guy's head. By the way, we're looking at the photo of a person's head on profile shot. So the laser is shooting from up here. We're looking at it from the side. Then it'll do the next layer. Then it'll do the next layer. Then it'll do the next layer. And right now you're looking at, at it as a 2D plane. We also have the Z axis here. So we also have one, two, maybe three tiles along the side as well. So what happens is, is you end up with what? Four, four tiles by call it three tiles. You end up with 12 tiles. The issue is, is that every time the table needs to move, the laser beam needs to stop burning. And that increases the time of the burn exponentially. That's problem number one. The production time is very long. Problem number two is, is that as it's building these tiles, what you're gonna see when you look at your crystal, when it's finally done, is a grid that looks like this here because it burned it as a grid. They're called ghost lines. And while they're not immediately obvious to the eye, as you put the crystal on light, which we always recommend because light gives your 3D crystal life, the customer will start to notice these imperfections and the grids uh, in the impression or in the point cloud that was produced within the crystal. So now you understand the challenge of current traditional laser machines the grid pattern, and the production time. That brings us to 3D laser box. 3D laser box is offered in three models, a jet, a drone, and a rocket. The jet uh, is more for single mode. So you put one crystal in at a time, let it burn, take it out, put the next one in. And the very powerful drones and rockets are created to do what we call multi-mode. Now, I just want to point out at this stage that we are not 
in the business of selling lasers. So when I'm producing this video, I'm producing it to explain why we chose the 3D laser box as our fleet of lasers to utilize in our laser hub and in our production environment. What we do uh, is we program software and our software, Cockpit 3D, for those of you who might know or who don't know, uh, is a very powerful software that enables you to very cost effectively create 3D files from flat images. And so what we do is we take our learnings from Cockpit 3D and we assist by providing uh, some code and some ideas and some knowledge and technology to being able to create software that's more efficient for the 3D laser box. That's our involvement in it. And therefore these lasers tie in and work very cohesively with Cockpit 3D software. So what happens with the 3D laser box? Well, first and foremost, when you're getting a drone or a rocket model, the tables are very nice and large. So what that means is, is that you're not just doing single mode, but you're able to do multi-mode. You're able to load multiple crystals on a table and burn most, multiple crystals as a project. Now, many companies will say that, well, our laser allows you to load multiple crystals at a time. But what they don't tell you is, is that all those crystals need to be the exact same shape and size, and the file needs to be the same, meaning that it would only work if a customer ordered multiple units of the exact same image. 3D LaserBox has very, very smart software. What it will allow you to do is on a table size that's quite large, on the drone, it's 30 by 40 centimeters. And on the rocket, I believe going by memory, it is 400 by 600 centimeters. It will allow you to load multiple shapes at a time, multiple sizes, multiple styles, and multiple photos, meaning that you can have multiple customers' projects done on one single project. That's benefit number one. Benefit number two comes to what we refer to as FOV, field of view. So unlike in the traditional laser system that's currently available from many manufacturers out there, what 3D laser box does is again, the same size crystal, 20 centimeters. It allows the laser to swing and travel a full 20 centimeters. Isn't that cool? So what that means is the table never needs to move. You can uh, put a large crystal on the table that's 20 centimeters top to bottom and you can press start. The table will not move. The laser beam will move and it will swing left to right the full 20 centimeters and it will therefore cut the production time in what we consider almost half. And the reason for that is because over here, every time the table had to move, the laser had to stop. Over here, the table doesn't move. The laser doesn't stop. The laser goes from start to finish, full way without ever stopping. And that therefore cuts the burn time in half. The second thing is that because the laser can have such a wide field of view, such a large reach, and because the table doesn't have to move, um, the laser will not burn in tiles it'll burn the entire image as one large tile, one large tile. And what that means is you will not see grid lines, you will not see ghosting lines, and that therefore does justice to creating a superior image within crystal that is almost perfect. So I hope that gives you a really clear, crystal clear understanding of FOV and why we choose the 3D laser box. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them along. I love talking 3D crystals and sharing information with the industry to help better subsurface laser engraving. And one last thing, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks for watching.